This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. week during workshops on their publishing success, their book marketing success, everything that will make them rock and roll. And one of the things that I brought up to the group is how essential it was to really put together a full-blown book proposal. And they all looked like to me like I was nutso. Um, certainly, I had to do that when I was uh, publishing exclusively with traditional publishers and New York publishers. But here's the truth. You all need to do it. And so I, you know, I was just pondering around, um, you know, who could I get to really talk about book proposals, why an agent would be the ideal person to hit on. And then I had also picked up a wonderful, a wonderful, wonderful book that I'm going to recommend to all of you called How to Write a Book Proposal. Obvious title. All right. The author is two authors, Jody Ryan and Michael Larson. Jody is a, a, an agent. Michael Larson is an agent, an unbelievable reputation and renown. And Michael is with us um, during this hour. So he's, a, he's an author coach. He loves helping writers. And he's worked in publishing in New York before he transitioned to San Francisco and created the, um, uh, the, really, the Michael Larson Elizabeth Pomada Literary Agents in 1972. They're charter members of the Association of Authors Representatives, and they have sold, I'm going to just say gazillions of books to more than 100 different publishers in prints before they stop taking on new clients. So right now, hot off the printing press, literally, he has gone back and re-looked at, because I used to always recommend his book that he had co-authored with another on how to write book proposals. And I think this is actually the single best book I have seen in a long time. So with that, let's bring Mike on. Hi, Mike. How are you? Fine, thanks. Yourself. Good morning. Good, good morning. Good evening or good afternoon, whatever time people are listening, huh? Yep. <laughs> All right. I am good. Um, you are in is uh, you are in uh, San Francisco where it's not snowing. I'm pretty confident. I'm in Colorado where it is snowing. So yes. we we oh. have that anyway. That you know what I I wanted to say, Mike. That um, I think every every writer to be author should really create a book proposal. So we're going to talk about a lot of other things. And the reason why is, for me, it's a guide plan. It, it helps keep you focused. It looks at, you know, so what are you going to do to market this baby, um, however you do it? Because you're, you're going to have to be involved in the marketing process no matter where you publish today. And I, I just think it's just smart and savvy to show, by golly, we're in business, and, and publishing is a business, authoring is a business, and you want to be successful. So that's where I come from and why I'm such a big proponent of your book. Well, that's very kind, uh, Judith. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the, the proposal is a business plan. And if you want to get published by a publisher, uh, the proposal has to convince uh, a, an editor and the rest of the people in the house who have to pass on the project that it's uh, it'll make enough profit to justify doing it. And uh, and I think it's important for writers to do that for themselves, even if they're planning to self-publish. So uh, it's very helpful. It's a writing tool as well as a selling tool because it's got an outline. So uh, it helps clarify uh, uh, what they want to do and how to do it. And it also gives them something to get feedback on from other writers who might be able to give them feedback to that can help them improve it. 
Do you think that a lot of them, Mike, don't realize that, I mean, certainly my experience is they don't really fully grasp that this is the business and that all, you know, businesses need some kind of a plan to go forward. I, I wonder if that's where they get well, stuck. <laughs> that's an interesting question. Uh, you know, uh, writers come to writing from all different kinds of perspectives and they've done different things in their lives. Uh, and so um, uh, they don't bring knowledge of uh, publishing or, or writing, and that's logical. It's not information that they're born with. Uh, George Bernard Shaw said that every profession is a conspiracy against the laity. Uh, new writers come up and they don't know anything, and so you know. Uh, but they shouldn't feel badly about that. I mean, one of the many reasons why now is the best time ever to be a writer is that there are more ways to learn about writing and publishing what they need to know than ever. Um, so I mean, there's more books and there's an you know, ocean of free information online, and you've been very good at providing authors with uh, uh, the information they need to know. So there's more ways than ever to, to learn, and they just have to look at it as an investment in their career and the learning what they need to know. And it is an investment. And you know, I had that same discussion. I did a workshop um, the other afternoon to a group of people who want to move into speaking, and you need to understand that. Not only is this a business, but you're going to have to make an investment in it, and your investment is your time and your energy and your money. And and getting your a book like you know how to write a book proposal, you know it's twenty bucks, well worth it, um, and that's part of the investment side of it. So that's where I you know jump into it really quickly. So let me ask you this very quickly. I mean you've been you've been working with authors for over fifty years. Um, isn't that about right? Is it over? Or is is it? Well, actually, we we, we stopped taking new uh, clients uh, uh, three years ago now. Mm -hmm. But we 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 had been agenting for Elizabeth Pomada and I, my partner and wife, mm -hmm. for forty three years at the time. So we were agenting for more than uh, four decades. Mm -hmm. So um, and uh, um, it's it's a wonderful life. It is. Um, you know, I have one of your books that you and Elizabeth wrote together. Oh, what's that? The Painted Ladies. Oh, <laughs> yes. I loved it. These, uh, are, these are all the wonderful homes in San Francisco, the Painted Ladies, they call them. Yeah. Well, yeah, it wound up being a series of six books, actually. It was a bunch of them in Colorado, actually. Um, mm -hmm. did two national books, and uh, it started kind of a... Uh, our trend, a colorist movement, uh, but yes, and, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we're very lucky with it. Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah. Well, let, let's just jump into some of these things about, you know, this is, it is it, there. there is a well-famous book, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Why is this the best time to be a writer? Um, well, um, uh, a bunch of reasons. Uh, it's a great question. Um, uh, uh, he, uh, writers are, are the most important people in the publishing process because they make it go. Writing is the easiest of the arts to enter, succeed, in, and they keep practicing. Mm -hmm. There's more subjects to write about and more ways to write about them. And you um, get better as you write. Indeed, indeed. Uh, uh, it's a perpetual learning process. Um, it's, it's, and I, I think the carpentry of, aspect of it is, is uh, well, it's something I personally enjoy uh, getting rid of extra words and, and uh, you know you learn from your mistakes uh, you know a failure you learn from is a success and and it's the human condition to to fail your way to success we make mistakes and we learn from them and we keep going um, there's more uh, authors are more books and authors to use as models uh, you have to figure out how to write a mystery there's a lot of mysteries out there you don't have to figure out how to be a successful author see what they're doing and, and do what they do there's more ways to test market their work. Everybody's books are going to be published. You can publish them for free. And there's more ways to publish than ever. And social media can make any book sell regardless of who publishes it or how. And it's amazing, but writers can reach more readers in more ways and places faster and more easily than ever for free. And they have more control over writing, publishing, and promotion and their careers. And they have more ways to build and sustain the communities they need to help them. And if they write books that sell each other, they will create a career out of it. And there's more ways to make money from books. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and they can make a tremendous opportunity to, to make a difference as well as a living. Well, you know, one of the things I, I told uh, this group that I did this workshop 
with not too long ago that it's, I mean, and in fact, I, I don't know, Mike, if you saw the recent data that showed literally that writers were making less money than ever, was authors were making less money than ever. Um, that's not been my experience. And that, but it goes back to having a plan. Okay, so how are you going to get your words out there? How are you going to connect? How are you going to get your fans, your followers? And, you know, when you talk about the things that go on, my first book came out in 1981, long time ago. And we, you know, we know where near had the tools that writers and authors have today. No, nowhere well, from the Internet. The Internet transformed what could be done in so many ways. Indeed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's it's the it's the greatest tool for writers since the printing press. Just technology, what they what can writers can mm -hmm. do with it, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in terms of producing work and promoting work and getting published. It's just an amazing tool. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty exciting. I mean, I would if if I had had that internet back in the eighties, oh my God, could I have had fun <laughs> in that? Yeah. All right, so. Is you know when, when you look at all the things that, uh, that that that's going on here, and I think one of the things you talk about how writing and we have that one minute for our first break, but we the, the writing community really is an integral part of a community. It serves its community, isn't that right? Oh yes, uh, and uh, the writing community is is at the, uh, I think the heart of um, what makes publishing go. Uh, again, writers are the most important people in publishing because they make the process go. Uh, and uh, it's it's just the best time ever to be a writer. There's no question about it. And one of the crucial aspects of being a successful writer is building communities, particularly of writers, fans of your work. All right. So when we come back, I want to ask Mike Larson, and he is the co-author of this fabulous book I want you all to get how to write a book proposal that will really show you how to put together the real business plan for your success. This is all for you. It's your guide to book publishing, and we are talking about author success, agency, as well as proposals. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you? Or another? Author You shows you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative no matter where you live. Author You brings in national experts for its book camps and annual Author You Extravaganza. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author You's extensive network, Members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. Author Use, the premier authoring resource in the country, creating community, education, guidance, vision, and success for the serious author. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author You is for you. Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms, and it is free. Discover Author You, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author You today at authoru.org. First impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop sizzle and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience and your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand nick selinger of nz graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts with over 20 years of experience in graphic design he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need such as posters, banners, postcards, one sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's ncgraphics.com. Oh, 
Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so. Or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand and platform, and is a success, a bestseller. It is your choice. You choose. If you want author and publishing success, you want Judith Bryles as your book coach. Sign up for her weekly blogs and e-zine at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. With me is Mike Larson. He is an agent who has been around a long, 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 long time. He has written several books under his own name, and we are talking about the one that he has co-authored with Jody Rhine, um, and it's called How to Write a Book Proposal. So, Mike, let's jump into the book proposal a little bit and that uh, some of the key components. I know you always say that a proposal really justifies that a, a, the publication of a book. Um, do you want, can you expand on that a little bit? Um, well, um, you know, writers like publishers are trying to balance art and commerce. Um, they love to uh, publish books with pride and with passion, but to survive, they have to publish books that sell. So certainly at, at, at big houses and, and medium houses, size houses as well, Usually, if an editor wants to buy a book, if they love a book, that's not simply enough. They have to do a, a long computerized P&L, profit and loss statement, justifying mm -hmm. the uh, by, by publishing the book because of the number of copies it'll sell, what subsidiary rights potential it has, uh, what the author brings to it, um, and what the author can do to promote it. Just everything, all the ammunition they can put together, and then they. Um, share this document and, and, and get feedback, and then, then they have to uh, make a case for the book at, at a weekly editorial meeting. Um, so it's it's a challenge, it's a process, uh, and um, uh, the, the document they create has to do that. They have a document, the proposal has to give editors all the information they need. There's many reasons to say yes and none to say no. So um, you know, every every part of a proposal has a particular function to uh, to to serve and and but ultimately every word in a proposal is has to answer two questions why the book and why the author so all right so i i think that's kind of a critical thing to know it's, it's why this book and why this author. I mean, that that's essential. It, it, in all the, I mean, you've seen uh, probably multi-thousands of, of proposals over the years. Um, when those are presented from, from your experience, is there one single area that lacks in proposals that gets it nixed? Or is it just overall, it just doesn't work? Well, uh, it's not overall. It's usually, well, it is overall, but also, I mean, is uh, well. First of all, books tend to be either prose-driven stories, fiction or narrative nonfiction, or, or um, promotion-driven books like how-to nonfiction mm -hmm. books. So, if it's prose, it's it's the writing, um, and if it's promotion, there are two things: platform and author's visibility, and a promotion plan, a list of what they will do to promote the book. So depending on the nature of the book, an editor might look at the query letter, and that's crucial. If the, the query letter has got to be impeccable. If the, if it's not well written or it doesn't tell an editor, it doesn't excite an editor about the book, then they won't even look at the material. Mm -hmm. So um, the 
query that is really essential to have, and uh, there's information in the, in the book about how to do that. Um, so that's one one thing is, uh, um, uh, but then there's um, an author's visibility. If it's a promotion-driven book, uh, um, how visible are they on the subject with potential book buyers online and off? Are they giving talks? Uh, what's their, what are they doing on social media? And publishers respond to numbers. They'll, they'll want to know how many um, connections they have on Twitter, uh, friends on Facebook, um, can, uh, links on LinkedIn. Um, if they have a blog, how, how many people read it? Um, so whatever it is they're doing very specifically, uh, if they're giving talks, how many talks have they, uh, are they giving a year? And where? And to how many people? So that, that notion of platform is extremely important to publishers. Um, because the promotion plan um, has to be a logical extension of what people are already doing to reach readers. So it's 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 really crucial. You can't say, for example, well, I'll give 50 talks a year, but you're only given five locally. And they don't believe that. And, and that's a crucial aspect of uh, for, for publishing. Publishers get stung by authors who promise to do all kinds of things and then don't do them. And publishers have no recourse. So they want to see that writers are already doing these things. Now, the, the, the smaller the house a public, an author will be happy with, the less important that is. Small houses, it's far less important. You just put down whatever you can put down. But the bigger the house you want, the more ammunition they're going to need. That's critical. Okay. Yeah. Well, if they're going to make an investment in you, what are you going to invest in yourself, right? Indeed, that's one way to look at it. The average investment a big house makes in a book, any book, without the advance, without the first printing, is $50,000. That's a bunch of money. So uh, um, how do they justify that cost? And again, 75% of books don't earn back their advances. So you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge. Uh, um, and it's, what's always been the case in publishing is the spaghetti factor. Uh, publishers throw six books at a wall, and, and the one that sticks pays for the five that fall to the floor. And they do fall. And they do fall. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I, absolutely. Um, yeah. But it, 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 again, uh, at, at the heart of what writers need to know is if, if they want to build a career, uh, that it's going to take five or more books to build a career. So they've got to keep writing books that sell each other, create synergy by doing some kind of series or standalone books that sell each other. That's how you build a career. I mean, everything a writer does, all the speaking and social media, should all have synergy, should all help develop their brand, develop their visibility. Mm -hmm. So they're benefiting from everything they do. Um, so that's a, that's a crucial piece of it. Do you have Super a favorite often, book? Yeah, yeah. Do, Mike, do you have a favorite book that you represented that – that uh, really took off? Well, I mean, um, a favorite book that uh, uh, I recommend that took off, and I'm not quite sure I understand the question. The but, successful, uh, that, that, that was the one that picked up the, the four books that failed. The, you know, every five oh, Well, I mean, our most successful nonfiction author is a guy named Jay Conrad Levinson. Wonderful well, well I know Jay, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. So, yeah. you know, uh, and his first book, we sent to like eight publishers. One of them, Houghton Mifflin, bid all of $8,500 on it. Um, and uh, he, he was teaching a class called um, a, 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 a class on how entrepreneurs uh, can make money in their businesses. And he wanted to write this book called uh, How to uh, Make Big Profits from Your Small Business. Mm -hmm. But in his proposal was the phrase guerrilla marketing. Oh, yeah. And as soon as I saw that, I knew that had to be the title for the book. Mm -hmm. uh, and indeed it was. And, and his title became a subtitle. And uh, it went on to uh, become a series of 40 books, most of which he co-authored. And indeed, he let me write guerrilla marketing for writers. But he also spoke around the world. Uh, and he made that brand. Um, and, and that's really what it takes. Uh, so, uh, you know, he's a wonderful, brilliant, creative guy, uh, but never stopped speaking. He spoke everywhere he spoke. I mean, he's passed away now, but uh, uh, but guerrilla marketing lives on. There's still guerrilla marketing books coming out, guerrilla books. It's just a way he's really kind of added something to the language. Um, and that's a great example of brand building. 
and and the notion of a brand is really important I mean, to keep writing books that sell each other and to use be consistent in the way you communicate with people so that you can build a brand because it's a crucial way to distinguish yourself from all the writers out there and all the writers that are out there and all the writers that will come out there be create a unique identity authentic identity that's who you are as a writer um, so uh, that's an important aspect of becoming successful mm -hmm. it's it's critical not just important i think it's critical on that so mike i know we're, we're actually we're going to come up to another br uh, break here in uh, another yeah. two minutes but here's what i'd like to to, keep, to start it now that you talk about the, all, the, com the different components of a, of a book proposal, and there's multiples. Let's can we kiss one of them? Just let's start off on what are those? Maybe identify all four of them, and then we can go into depth. So, what are the the key four components? Well, uh, uh, the idea is it a saleable idea? Um, I mean, titles can be very important, but right, is the phrase working title. Uh, is an oxymoron or writers too close to their work to come up with the best title, but it is an idea that's promotable. Does it lend itself to other books? Um, how does it compare to uh, this idea compared to other books on the field? Because you know, what you're writing about, there's a lot of other books on the shelf. The shelf is full. Uh, new books will keep coming out on practically any subject. So uh, how strong is the idea? And then, of course, the writing. Does the author have the chops, the writing chops, to, to write the book? And then those other two aspects I mentioned are, are platform and promotion. So those four things will tell publishers uh, what they need to know. And again, for small houses, platform and promotion aren't important. So uh, writers nearly need to be clear about their goals, and that's something I hope we'll get a chance to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, because their literary and publishing goals determine what they write, and how they write it, and how they promote it. Well, maybe maybe the first thing that all writers need to start with is answering that question, getting it down. Yeah, what I, are the totally. goals? Exactly, I mean, exactly if, right. If, so if we're going to go in, in um, and looking at the very beginning, and it, it does, it marvels me where people really, they don't have goals for reaching people. They don't have really goals for themselves. They just like to write. So let's come back and kiss on that and then. With me is Mike Larson. He's the co-author of How to Write a Book Proposal, and you're listening to Author You, your guide to business. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged events. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz, and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success. In the fall and winter, Judith Bryles Speaking Unplugged includes Judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days. You will learn how to structure a speech, how to create openings and closings, how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books, and you will get one-on-one -on -one coaching. Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the Events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972. They believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers 
allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All righty, we're actually just starting on book proposals on the critical components that Mike Larson has identified from, you know, from is it is it sellable? Is it promotable? Um, that does as does the writer display that they have some what what Mike says writing chops. Love that. Uh, what what about the platform, um, etc. So it it and what we just started with was that what the goal was. So I'd like to come back to that because I don't think Mike any of this can come together unless the the writer to be author has a clear indication of vision of what they want and where they're going so they can figure out how to get there. A- am I wrong? Absolutely right. Absolutely right. No, there's no question about it. And there's two kinds of goals. The first of all, literary goals, you know, what you want to write, who you want to reach, how, how big is that audience? Um, uh, and uh, um, what, what forms you want to write in. There's more kinds of, there are more subjects to write about and more ways to write about them than ever. Um, so, uh, what impact do you want your writing to have? Um, you know, uh, how many books do you want to write a year? Uh, some people spend 10 years writing a book. So, uh, you need to be clear about your literary goals, but you also need to be clear about your publishing goals. Uh, over four decades, we, 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 most writers usually know their literary goals, but they don't un- understand what they need to know to, uh, to have clear publishing goals. Who they want to publish your book, what size house, how many copies they wanted to sell, what size advance would they like for their book, um, you know, wh- where they want to be in five years as a writer. Sue Grafton advised writers to have a five-year plan. Where do they want to go as writers? Um, my, my advice, really all my advice boils down to three simple things. Figure out what your literary and publishing goals are. Figure out what it takes to achieve them and do it. So uh, goals are extremely important. Uh, and and, um, and, and a, a point that relates to that is I spoke about the importance of writing five or more books to succeed. Now, a lot of writers only want to write one book, and that's fine. But publishers are less interested in, in writers they can't develop. They want writers who, who they can build, and that's for agents as well. So if you only want to write one book, that's fine. Write that book. Uh, you, know, you can self-publish it for free or, or maybe try a small house. Uh, but uh, again, m- most first books do not sell well, so you can't have great expectations for it. You might luck out, but that's you know when there's more than a million books published a year, that's kind of hard. So the simplest thing, if you want to write one book, is to either look for a small house or self-publish it, or a specialty press or university press maybe. Mm-hmm. So, how many books are? Uh, uh, d- let me should ask it this way: for uh, we're talking mainstream publishing, the traditional publishing, the New York types publishing not the small presses and all this um are they what how many books are they publishing is there a guesstimate out there a year now well i, I can give you a number but it's certainly less than ten thousand. the big houses mm-hmm. uh the tr- you know, publishers do like 300 and well, about three hundred fifty thousand books a year uh the number keeps uh, it keeps growing more publishers open their doors actually self publishers are doing far more books than that uh, um so uh, but in any case uh, the big houses are, 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 are actually, if anything, trying to streamline their lists and uh, uh, 
to avoid books that they feel won't make money, which is uh, they're also consolidating imprints, which reduces the number of opportunities for new writers. I and mean, it's getting harder for new writers to be published by New York houses. That's just the reality new writers face. Mm-hmm. And it, and and then so what about advances? Where are they? You know, are they up? Are they down? Is there an average oh, well, hard, out there hard, hard, for a hard, genre? Hard, hard, I'm, uh, um, well, again, it varies. You know, I'm trying to generalize my question, but for first books, advances are either going to be four figures or low five figures. Um, the disappearance of, um, uh, of the big chain, there's only one big chain now, Barnes and Noble, and that's got its share of problems. Uh, mm-hmm. Publishers are concerned about whether it'll keep going on. But there's fewer places to for, for Publishers to place books, which means the advances have gone down because there's few copies they can hope to sell. Um, so that's a challenge. Advances aren't, aren't going up, and and publishers are more and more anxious to keep whatever rights they can uh, to try and wring some profit out of their books. Well, if you're going to go back to what you said from in in, in our first segment, that uh, before the book even gets to print, the publisher has got a fifty thousand dollar roughly investment. Um, yeah, in, right. in all the all the components and creating the infrastructure for the book, um, exactly, and getting yeah. it ready to go. And and you know, a, a, Mike, a lot of people just don't realize that they just don't see the back end of of a lot of things as you go forward. The people who do the end, you know, their small press, um, if they start their own small press or self, depending on how they do the self, get a better idea. I think. Oh, no question about it. And more small presses are opening all the time. I mean, it's wonderful um, because most books don't, uh, aren't earning money. The the opportunity to develop new writers has fallen to small presses, niche presses, mm-hmm. uh, university presses, and, and, and of course, um, most new authors self-publish. So there's more ways to get published than ever. So writers have to decide based on the idea for their book and how commercial it is and what they can do to promote it, what's the best option for them now? It's not a lifetime decision, but it's where they are now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of publishers out there. All right. So w- when I look at, um, I, I, I actually have your content page open up on in my lap as we're talking about it. And one of, in, in, in part three, where it t- breaks down the proposal breakdown, you have a, a, a chapter called Pizzazz. Um, what's that all about? Well, it's just something on the first page that, that uh, Jody's not very effective in, in, in her proposals, and, and that is the, just coming up with the snazziest thing, the most enticing thing you can say about the book. Um, it can be whatever would be most enticing for a publisher. So um, uh a, a quote, a statistic, whatever will most excite publishers about the idea for the book. It's on a simple page by itself, um, just after the title page. Uh, um, um, so, uh, so it's the way designed to get it, it is quickly. Yeah, so it's designed to make uh, it to be a snap, crackle, and pop, and to get the eye of the exactly, ed- exactly. editor who's reading it to, to yeah. just, it, it's, it's the hook you're throwing out and you're hoping to snag them. Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. But ah. again, keep in mind, even before publishers see that pizzazz, they've already seen a query letter. And you know, one of the fundamental aspects of information today too, is that it has to be scalable. So you can have a one line pitch or an elevator pitch, which is longer. You have a one page query letter and you have a proposal and then you have the full manuscript. So information has to be able to be presented at different lengths. Uh, if you're giving a talk, you might have half an hour, you might have an hour. You might do a two-day seminar. So there's all different kinds of ways. That's the good news, more ways to uh, test market and, 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 and sell information than ever. So, uh, um, But you have to be able to condense uh, what you, your information in a way so it serves different purposes at different times. Mm-hmm. So what we're really talking about is really a a, a book hook. Um, exactly, exactly. And yeah. and just pulling it in. Okay, I love that idea, Mike. I mean, you know, I'm all for that because of our, when they're saying that, that a goldfish has more of an attention span than most humans, that's, <laughs> we got to go with something fast. Well, there. but that's a, that's a very, very important point. Um, and, uh, um, and it's particularly for writers to keep in mind. You know, every word a writer writes is an audition for the next word. 
yes. uh, readers, whether they're editors or book buyers, are only reading far enough to make a decision whether they want to keep reading and, and, and how you get them to keep reading when there's so many other ways they can spend their, 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 their free time, not to mention their discretionary income. So uh, uh, keeping readers' attention is, is just uh, the big challenge, really, for writers. I know it's it's a challenge. So, it it doing it. Um, I would love to have you kiss on Mike. That that uh, you you do talk about these elements which you've kissed on in prose, and that that usually determine. And and so in and when an editor and publisher they're looking to put a deal together, it's really about the the platform is really essential, is it not? The, the, the well, writer, again, author, it, it depends on the kind of book. For a how-to book, it is. Yes. If it's a book of prose, if it's a literary novel or, or, or a genre. Well, genre novels are, are even different because they, they tend to be more promotable to their communities. Mm-hmm. Literary fiction is is harder. The community's there, but uh, um, so uh, uh, but it, if it's a promotion-driven book, then platform is very important. It's a how-to book. It's got a lot of potential. Sometimes a memoir can be both. If you're if one's writing a memoir about an issue in the news, then it can be both prose driven, so how well it reads determines its fate, but also promotion driven. If 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 the subject will interest the media, then it's, it can be promotion driven as well. So you you mentioned that the there's five elements that usually determine this. So very briefly before we go to our final break, those would be. Those five elements. Well, the the idea, the title, okay. the style, the platform, and the promotion plan. And so that marketing promotion plan for all of you who are listening is really critical. They want to know what. Here's what your editor, this put this this editor who's who's maybe evaluating you. They want to know what you're going to do to get out and help support this book, which you know, Mike was so different from when I first started publishing. Because I was, you know, when I first started publishing, St. Martin's Press took good care of me. <laughs> they did all that. Well, well, but, you know, publishers never spend a lot of money on promotion. They can't. They're doing too many books. Ultimately, whether you publish your book or Random House does, the, the, the ultimate responsibility for promotion is going to be on your shoulders. That's just the given. And so, uh, you know, when a house is doing hundreds of books a year, they have to rely on authors. They just can't promote all of their books. Yeah, they do. So obviously, the, the more they the more they pay, the more they push. So if a book's a little book, then uh, that it's means up to writers. The author does the big push. All right, we're going to be right back. This is Mike Larson. We're going to talk about basic publishing options. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and guide to collaborate with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, by a publishing service provider, and sometimes even by the author. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR, 
are perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print on demand facility, streaming browser based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1 800 465 5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask if you want to write and publish a book if you want to be successful as an author your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask is for you stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics scenarios and strategies on what to do now to get you published so let's get back to the show and here again is your host dr judith briles If you really would like to um, go sell your book to New York, if, if that's in your game plan, and I will say when I first started publishing, that was the only game plan. That was the only legitimate game plan. But there are now lots more options. And my guest today, Mike Larson, has co-written a wonderful, wonderful book called How to Write a Book Proposal. And it's really been identified as now today the essential resource for selling your book, that you've got great examples of books that have pulled down really hefty, attractive, comfortable six-figure deals, but also great guidance for agents, um, strategies for working within the, today's digital age. And I like the the list that they have of really 10, 10 top um, proposal killers, which, Mike, if we have a chance, we could, we could in, kiss those before we leave the leave today. Um, but you know, so many times I get calls from people or I'm speaking about book marketing. Um, and I've always been lucky cause I love book marketing. I love marketing and that, that I would say that 95% of the time I will get a pushback from whoever I'm speaking to, but you know, I, I don't like marketing. I don't want to mic, uh, I, I market. I, I, I just want to write. That's all I want to do. I just want to write. And that I find is, I think it's good to write, Mike, but I think if you're not going to help support the book, that that's a problem. What do you think? Well, it depends on one's goals. I mean, the notion of being an artist in the garret, just sitting there writing books, it's a very appealing one. And, and writers are, are introverts. You know, they want to tell a story without making eye contact, as John Green says. So, you know, it, it, it depends on one's goals. It depends on how successful one wants to be. You know, one of the amazing things about being a, a, a writer today is that social media mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, can make a book a bestseller regardless of who publishes it or how. So if a book's out there and just one person, just one person says to somebody on social media that you must read this book and the process is repeated, the book will succeed regardless of who publishes it or how. So that's amazing. Now, you can just rely on that if you want, but when there's more than a million books published a year, that's not really the most likely thing. So it's to be clear about how much success you want and what it takes to be that successful and learning from authors in your field how they succeed. It, it's nothing mysterious. The information's all out there. It's the same, you know, it's, it's really obvious, but you need to be part of a writing community, uh, the kind of writing community that you create, Judith. Uh, you need to be aware of what's going on, subscribing to magazines, going to events. It's all out there. That's another great thing. There's more ways to learn than ever. It's not mysterious. So, but it should be, it, it's your life and, and, and it's your energy. So you've got to, again, be clear about your goals and, and do what it takes to achieve them, whatever that is. Yeah, and so you have to really decide that. And I have to, my response to all of them is that, well, here's the great news with the internet and the able to reach out and do so much marketing, you don't have to travel. It, it go, you don't have to make eye contact a lot of times. You can just write a lot of the stuff that you have to do. So um, the Internet has yeah, changed, it, changed marketing dramatically. Sure. I mean, I, I don't think it's either. I really think it's, it, it, you know, fascinating thing is that uh, readers who love your work want to have a relationship with you. And it's easy to sustain that relationship online and social media and with a blog, uh, with video, with audio, more ways to reach readers than ever. Um, but they also want to meet you. you know, they want to come see you. Uh, uh, they want to ask you questions. They want to come to your events your, where you're doing talks or classes and get more ways to make money from your books than ever. Um, so uh, they want an in-person uh, 
relationship as well as an online relationship, which you sustain with information that they crave. Um, so uh, that's all good. There's more ways to connect with readers and sustain your community than ever. That's wonderful. That's a tremendous. That's I mean, that's that's the power of kings to be able to do that. <laughs> the power, how to be the power of kings and the power of queens, huh? But Michael, yeah, I wanted he, you. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, please. Yeah. Okay. I wanted you to kiss on the the three basic publishing options that are that are available today. Okay. Well, the first is self publishing, which is what most most new writers are doing. Uh, there's more ways to do that than ever, and there's uh, more help for it if you want to do that. Um, so, uh, and that's what most new writers do. Um, and it's a way of test marketing yourself uh, as a writer and as an author, doing what authors have to do to succeed. So uh, uh, that's a growing trend, and I, and I think a very positive one. Um, and, and must say, it's in part, is by necessity because publishers simply can't publish all the books that are out there. So, and again, most books fail. So selling a book to a publisher that's more likely to fail and succeed, uh, you have to weigh that. Um, so uh, it, it, can depend, it certainly can depend on the kind of book you're writing. So if you're writing a, a, a novel or, or, or a prose-driven book, or memoir or whatever, and, and which reviews are more important, then seeking a publisher is a logical idea. Um, not necessarily that their books will get uh, that books will, will, will get reviewed, but it's more likely to be reviewed if it comes from a publisher than directly from an author. Although, you know, as, as the world goes from analog to digital, uh, reviews are moving from print to online as well. Um, so, um, hmm? where, uh, where were we with that, Judith? Well, and and as it's it's it's. The choices. I think what's great is we have choices. Oh, okay, right. Thank yeah. you. So yeah. the first is self-publishing. The other is writers can find publishers for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, New York Houses publish a small percentage of books that are published, and, and only they need agents. There's tens of thousands of publishers of all sizes. Well, not of all, but of mid-sized houses and small houses around the country uh, that writers can approach directly. So the, so the buy books from authors. So and so you can do that, and it's the same way you look for an agent. You know, just mm -hmm. write to research at publishers. The great news about agents and publishers is that they all have websites to describe what they want to see and how to approach them. So mm -hmm. just follow the directions, give, give them what they need to see. Which is terrific. The, other, the, third, the yeah. third way is really to use an agent, but yeah, yes, yeah, do. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Well, and that's terrific. They, 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 everything is out there. You can find it. You just have to yep. be a sleuth. You've got to be a sleuth. Right. All right. right. So, and, and, go ahead. You ready? Well, I was going to say, you know, you can use your writing community for all these things too. I mean, being part of writers' organizations and and looking at magazines. I mean, there's there's more sources of information about how to get published and and and, and how to get help than ever. And more organizations. It's wonderful. It's just the best time to be a writer for that reason. The and help I, is out there. The information's out there. It is. All right. So, Mike, you, you talk about, uh, I, I mean, I've heard you speak before about doing test markets for your books. Um, what do you suggest today? And also, what are some of the tools that you would recommend for today's author? Uh, what kind of tools do it for what? I'm well, the, you, well to, to make even, could be a better writer or to whether it taps into any anything that you have found across. I mean, there there are writing tools, for example, if people use Schreibner or something to help them build on their fiction side or they sure, also be grammarly. But, yeah, oh uh, grammarly, yeah, fabulous. Writing yeah, there's more kinds of writing tools than ever. Um, uh, uh, so and that's certainly uh, good news. But, you know, you were asking about test marketing, and, and, and that's mm -hmm. one of the many reasons why now it's the best time ever to be a writer. There's more ways to test market your book than ever to make sure it'll sell. I mean, it starts off with uh, um, just getting two kinds of readers. If you're writing, you should be part of a writer's group that gets together periodically, and once a couple of weeks, once a month, whatever, and critiques each other's work. That's crucial, so you get feedback on it. As you go along, the reality is you're going to be too close to your work to judge it objectively. I sure can't. It's not possible. You need fresh eyes. So mm -hmm. as you write, and after you've finished, your writing group should be giving you feedback on your work. But beyond that, you also need test readers, called beta readers. You need a community of people 
um, who can give you tell you what's good about your work and also how to improve it. Obviously, responses should be constructive. Um, so getting that kind of feedback is really, uh, really crucial. Um, but so in terms of test marketing, that's certainly test marketing. You know, the, the Jacobsu guys sh- shared their stories with a panel of 40 readers who graded every story on a scale of 1 to 10, and they just used the 9 and a and 10s. So having, having readers grade your work and every, every moment is impacted it on a scale of 1 to 10. Mm-hmm. Which can be scary. a lot of feedback on your work. Yeah. Which can be scary. Oh, yeah. and, and, and I do want to add on to this, that when you're getting beta readers in play, I think it's really important that you have in your beta reader play people who would actually be buyers of your book. Um, that I have seen the kiss of death in sometimes writing groups, Mike, where someone who has a really profound, um, uh, maybe a memoir of some sort, and someone who only reads mystery books is making comments on ripping it apart. You know, I think we have to be careful there sometimes. Oh, you're absolutely right. You, there's no question about it. Um, you, uh, uh, if you need to get feedback from the range of readers who will actually buy your work. Um, so, you know, think about who are the markets for your book and get people in those, those kinds of readers to give you feedback on your work. Also, in terms of range, what are the age range for your readers? Is It will be interesting to a YA audience, a young adult audience. Will seniors be interested? Whatever that range is, mm-hmm. they should be, both in terms of interest and age, they should be giving you feedback on your work to make sure it works for them. Yeah, exactly. So, All right. So we have yeah. one more minute. I would love to have you kiss on. I mean, you've been around this area for a zillion years. What about balancing the personal and professional life? How does a writer balance, keep things in balance? Well, that's more important than ever. I mean, you need to balance your, your time online and off. Uh, you need to balance writing your work and communicating about it. Because that, those are the two fundamental things writers do. Um, you need to find a harmony in, in how you live uh, between your personal and professional lives. Um, and, and that's extremely important. Um, mm-hmm. so, uh, 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 you just... Uh, uh, you need some balance between being indoors and out, um, uh, between, you know, again, promotion and writing. Um, you know what? It goes back to, you know, what's your vision and what's your goals? And then you, you kind of bring it all together. And, um, and with that, I want to thank Mike Larson. He's uh, a, a just an extraordinary successful agent and has done wonderful things for his authors. And he is the co-author of the brand new Hot Off the Press, How to Write a Book Proposal, which I recommend to all of you. Thank you, Mike. being a part of your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles each week